Top of the morning, friends and family. I have been asked to do a video on my thoughts on the Spiderball Python, the Spiderball Python ban, all of the above. So today's not gonna be a normal vlog where we go around checking stuff out. I'm just gonna stick to the spider subject. <laughs> Now, before I dive into my thoughts on it, why don't we dive into what the spider gene is. As many of you may know, the spider gene in ball pythons is a genetic mutation that comes with not only a pattern change, an extreme pattern change, but what appears to be a neurological issue where the, the animal has a tough time kind of deciding uh, which way is up and which way is down. It's, that's what's been readily accepted by the community is that it does have a neurological issue. And all the spider ball pythons in captivity did originate from one single animal. and that would be something to think about if it weren't for the fact that there's also an issue with uh, the jaguar gene in both carpet pythons and reticulated pythons that have a similar wobble issue. So it could be argued possibly that if you found another spider ball python in the wild, it too would have that same issue. Who's to say? Another interesting thing is that there is another morph that has been proven allelic with spider and that's blackhead. And when you mix the two, blackhead and spider together, you get what looks much more like a normal snake, almost like the blackhead counts out the spider. And I believe it's also been observed that they don't; those animals don't appear to have any wobble. And that's just interesting, just something to think about. There's so much research yet to be done on the genetic mutations and their effects on spider ball pythons, or ball pythons in general, I mean. And I've, there's a guy I met in Daytona, Ben Morrill, who's currently working on uh, mapping out the genome for pythons, ball pythons included. I think his work could help shed some more light on some of these these issues and what's going on with some of this stuff. I think it would be really cool. There's a lot to learn, a lot going forward. We're, we're very much in the dark, you know, plugging away at these things for the most part. There's, there's still so much that's uncovered. So before I hit record on this video, I went and watched other videos that I know there's been a lot done recently on the spider gene. There's even one that my buddy uh, over in the UK, Gavin at Balls to You, did over a year ago when this ban of spider ball python sales at the IHS shows in the UK was still not coming into fruition and they were working on doing it. So there's been a lot of videos done on it, which is why I, I, wasn't, gonna, I wasn't planning on doing one, but then when I was asked to, I was like, well, sure, why not? I just went into YouTube, typed in spider gene banned, and went through the first five videos I saw there, and each one of those videos had points that I agreed with and had points that I disagreed with, and they were both on both sides of the fence. It's a fairly controversial issue in the snake keeping, ball python keeping world. Some people are on this side of the fence, some people are on this side of the fence. Now before I dive into my thoughts on it, it's always important I think to know whoever's talking, you gotta know their bias, because everybody's got a bias. If somebody says they don't have a bias, they're lying to you because everybody has a little bias. All the things we experience in this world create the person we are and we have our own per specific views on this and that. I have three ball pythons here with the spider gene in them. To be fair, I got those snakes before I knew that there was an issue with the spider ball pythons having a neurological issue. <laughs> Also, I do work with a company that is one of the pioneers of that morph. I've also since produced a clutch from a leopard spider ball python after knowing that there are some issues with the gene. Um, some people like to say that, that there are spiders without wobble. From what I've gathered from different sources in my, is that some may not display the wobble, some may show it early and then lose it as adults, some may not have it as, as babies and then grow into having a wobble as adults. So. I personally would like to see a lot more research done on it. And again, I know there are people out there doing that, so it'll be interesting to see what the results are, especially with the allelic thing with the blackhead and the spider canceling each other out. So there's my bias. But before you go down to comment about what you think I'm gonna say, I recommend you watch the whole video so you don't make yourself look like a dummy. So the first thing, Gavin made a good point in his video, like why, why, does any, why do any of us here in the US care about a ban in the UK? It doesn't affect us at all. But I would say there is a potential for it to affect us. It's not like the UK and England haven't had an effect on 
the world outside of them before. You know, I, I am speaking my own version of English right now, so there's that. And and plus, uh, when something happens in the community, it could end up going that, this way or that way, and everything affects each other. I'm the type of person that really doesn't like authority and being told what to do. I personally think that if the International Herb Society decides they don't want to allow the sale of ball pythons at their shows, that's their right to. It's not a law they've created where you can't sell ball pythons. Um, it's just at those particular shows. I'm sure many of you realize that if you've watched all the videos on the subject. Now there are other genes that have issues with them. You know, spider's not the only one that has a neurological wobble. You got the sable, you've got the hidden gene woma, woma, uh, champagne, I believe also has a wobble. So there are lots of other traits out there that would, would need to fall into that same category of having a neurological issue and be something that could be potentially banned. Not to mention things like uh, super lessers or super cinnamons having an issue. Now those are different in the fact that you can choose to not breed a cinnamon to a cinnamon and avoid that and still work with those genes and just not purposely create those issues with those snakes. Whereas the spider, if you breed a spider to anything, you got 50-50 chance of getting spider. There's no, there's no pairing there where you're not going to potentially get spider. Another thing that comes to my mind, and I know this is going to be comparing apples to oranges in a big way, but I've got a cousin who is high on the spectrum for uh, autism, and it creates its challenges with his life. Is he not getting the full enjoyment out of life as I am? Who's to say? I, I can't say for sure. I mean, he, he's able to communicate to us much more than a snake is. Now, again, it is definitely apples to oranges because we're not trying to sell my cousin to somebody. And, but should my, my one thought is like, should there be a law enacted that would keep him from being able to have a family of his own one day? Um, say he does, you know, does get to the point where he's able to work with our societal norms and, and function in our society as it is today, should he not be allowed to reproduce? That's a tough one. Of course, a lot of this stuff is theoretical. It's just one single show organization that banned it. It's not like we're facing a law that's banning this. However, because that's happening, it does set the precedent that it's possible for that to happen. I personally, again, would like to see more research done and, and to figure out what's really going on. Because the, th the tough thing for me is how do we tell if the snake is suffering or if it's just different and experiencing the world in a different way that's not normal, obviously, but is it really suffering? Is it hurting? Is it in pain? That's something I'd like to know before having a distinct side of the fence that I'm on. Because I'm really not. If there was a ban on selling spiders here in the US at some point because of those neurological issues, I wouldn't necessarily be against it. I'd be okay. It's not like there's not hundreds of other base morphs out there that we can create really awesome combos with. It's, it's not the end of the world. There's ways around it. If you're looking at it from a financial standpoint, you know, obviously people that have really heavy spider in their, in their breeding stock and, and that's going to take a big cut out of their thing. Obviously they're going to be on the side of the fence of let's not do that because it's going to hurt their bottom line. That's the bias, right? And given my history of not being a fan of authority, I would tend to side with them. Like, don't tell me what to do. But again, if there was a ban, I would, I would be okay with it. I would, work, I would work with it and I would probably even, even without being policed, stop producing spiders myself. I'm all for the betterment of the uh, animal's life. I just want to see more research on if it's really causing them pain, if they're suffering, you know. It's, it's so hard to tell with a snake. Some people will say that it's easy to tell. If you can show me a way to prove it, then I'll, I'll agree with you. And that being said, I'm not against the idea of never breeding spiders again. I'm not. I'm not. I would be fine with that. Probably gonna have some people that disagree with me there, but that's what happens when you put your opinion out on the internet. <laughs> so your guys' thoughts. I want to hear from you guys down in the comments. What are your opinions on it? What side of the fence are you on and why? Are you up the middle, kind of like I am a little bit? Let me know. What, what could we do? What, can, what do you guys... What does this mean for you guys going forward? What can we do? Educate people. I think it is important for people to know what they're getting into if they are purchasing a spider gene. And maybe that'll be something that'll fix itself right there. If enough people know what it is, everybody can make their informed decision on whether or not to support the breeding of spider ball pythons by purchasing them or not. If people aren't buying them, 
issue corrects itself right there. But education, I think, is number one. And yeah, so I hope you guys liked or hated this video. <laughs> See you later. For those of you guys that are not familiar with my snake, Junior, here he is. You can see his face there. He's having quite the issue.